I hope it's a good one. Although being a uh, umpire and a referee, um, I would hope that uh, people realize that that is a job and not to take it personally. But I hope it's a, a very good reputation and and whatnot. Um, but I haven't heard anything bad, so. I think the biggest thing that I would change would be the fact that people realize that I am actually a very introverted person, very shy person, because that can come across as arrogance or cocky to people who don't know me, because I can get into like this one little one-minded, I'm by myself walking down the street and I just don't see people, I just get uh, thinking. And so I think that some people see that as arrogance and cocky, and it's not. It's just uh, people see me outgoing and on stage and very bubbly and whatever, and they expect me to be that all the time, and I'm just, I'm not that way. I'm a very quiet, reserved person by, ne by nature. Well, I guess in one area that I have succeeded is becoming a very um, professional umpire and referee. My first year in referee in basketball, I moved from elementary basketball where they start you out to uh, JV and high school basketball within one year, which is very rare for a basketball official to do. Um, it was kind of uh, just by making sure that I knew what I was doing, looking like I knew what I was doing is the key. But that was one thing that I think uh, really helped me succeed because I did not want to. After those first three bas uh, those elementary school games, it was horrid because the parents are going crazy at you. And so after the third game, I wanted to hang up my whistle and hang, hung, hang up my jersey, but I decided, you know what, I can't. I can't quit at what I've, been, uh, what I've decided to do. And so I decided to uh, persevere through it. Gee, I've almost worked every single night in the area working because I, I worked on getting better and succeeding in what I do and take it seriously and then working here at intramurals has helped a lot as well. And also in softball, um, in my third year, third year of, um, no, second year of umpiring fast pitch, I was selected to go to nationals, a national tournament up in Johnson City. So that's one area that I really like to think that I have succeeded in doing the best that I can do is in umpiring and, in, and refereeing basketball. I in senior year I was giving a speech for on 9-11 and um, since I was SA president, I, uh, the chaplain had asked me to give the chapel talk. And I had written something, but then decided that I was going to throw it out. And it was like, hey, it's 9 11, let's do something. So I printed out this, um, this uh, poem that I had read or had heard read at church the Sabbath before. And without looking over it, I read in my talk this poem. Well, it ended up having some very bad theology uh, about 9 11. And um, it was very embarrassing for me, very embarrassing. Like, I can, st I still have the audio, and you can hear just the embarrassment in my in my voice. And it, it helped me learn to prepare better, and to realize what you're going to be using in materials, and making sure that uh, you go through it and having practice. Because otherwise, when you get up there, you can make a fool of yourself. But also, just to laugh it off, um, in many mistakes that I've made, um, especially in speaking. I guess one big thing that irritates me about people is um, them acting like they know everything and talking about a subject when they have really no clue. And then when you try to present another option or say, hey, what about this? They just, and you have some experience in it, and they just kind of blow it off and act like, no, this is the way we're going to do it. This is, I know what's best. Um, I think it's people that are, are very uh, one set minded, they're not very open to that and even, especially when they don't know what they're talking about. And maybe that's the reason why it irritates me the most is probably because that's the way I used to be and maybe still am. You know, they say things that irritate you about other people is, is things that are wrong with you. So maybe that's a self-critique on myself, but uh, a way that I have to, to work with it is just realize, you know, hey, look, we're all human. I act that way. Um, they're going to act that way. And I need to be able to be open-minded to the fact that they're going to be closed-minded. And so that's, that's one way that I help work with that. Ways that I can see myself gaining credibility is doing, using active listening and really caring about the student body and making sure that I come through with the promise that I've made, and that is to do the best that I can and make the Senate the best that it can be. The top three priorities would be A, to make sure that the Senate starts uh, being very serious about its job, uh, making sure that the senators realize that it is an elected position that they are holding and that with that comes responsibility. Responsibility to represent the students and to actually do something with the 
budget that we've been given and to improve the campus and the students' life here on campus. Uh, the second thing would be to provide training for those senators. Um, I know one thing that really helped me whenever I was in Senate coming in as a freshman um, was that there was people on the Senate who were mature, who had been there for several years and who had experience, who helped me understand Robert's rules of order and how to write a proposal and different things like that. And I think that's one reason why these senators sometimes don't do things. Is that they just don't know how. And that's not to fault them. That's not to fault the leadership. That's just something that comes with the territory. So that would be the one big if, if it ha I mean, it's almost up there with number one, would be to help make sure that they know exactly what they're doing so that way they can do the best job that uh, they can as an elected official. The third thing um, that I would like to do is really bond uh, the senators together. So we're a working team, not just a senate that meets once every or twice a month, once every two weeks, but to create unity so that way um, people can have a sense of ownership and that they realize that there is some kind of accountability as well. I mean, you're more likely to keep on doing something and do it well if you have friends that are there. You know, you, you want to be a part of something when you have friends and that will keep you accountable.